All right, hello, we are live. This is uh, Frank Klesitz with Viral Marketing. You're here because you wanna learn how Andrew Duncan is going to earn $7 million. Let me say that again, Woo! $7 million, which is an incredible amount of money in real estate commission. <laughs> Uh, this year, up uh, from six years ago, uh, only earning about 400000 I say only, that's actually really good income, but comparatively speaking, only, right? And uh, today, Andrew, thanks for being on, man. Glad to do it with you guys, man. You guys have been great for our business and great partners of ours, so glad to help and answer some questions, see what I can do to help some people. Yep. So I was talking before this, I think anyone who's on this is probably, you know, probably at that, you know, point where they're kind of maxed out as a producer and then you are able to scale. And I want to go through, we came up before this uh, webinar with seven things, seven specific things that you did in order uh, to get to that point. And we're going to try to go into each of these seven things. So the first thing was education. We're going to talk about that. You opened yourself up for education. They did radio advertising. They hired a coach, which made you start tracking everything. And once you're tracking everything, now you started hiring correctly. And then you brought on viral marketing. We'll talk about that. And then finally, you started expanding other markets. So that's generally the order you can expect this webinar to go with those seven things. So Andrew, I'll let you get started. Tell me where you were at. You're doing 400,000 a year, GCI, six years ago. What was that like? Tell us about that experience and your decision to grow from there and let's go through all those steps. So it's, it's interesting, like a lot of people out there, we were real estate agents, we were listing and selling property. My wife and I were both in production. We had a couple of people working with us, maybe an assistant and a buyer agent. We were burning it at both ends. We were working, you know, 80 hours a week, um, you know, just putting in a lot of time, you know, to get to a point. And I think at the end of the day, we, you know, we thought there had to be a better way. There's got to be more for us out there to be able to be more successful uh, and grow a, a real business versus being more or less a high paid, you know, having a high paid job. So, you know, we were at that point where we were both working a lot. We were frustrated. And, and we wanted to look for ways to grow our business and to expand from where we were while also still having a great quality of life. For us, it wasn't just necessarily about the money. It was about what can we learn? What can we grow? What can we improve? We, we both enjoyed kind of the pursuit of growing the business from scratch to that point. So how can we continue that um, while not having to work 80 hours a week? And, and that's what we started to look at then with, with you know, pursuing other opportunities and, and opening our horizons. Um, and I think one of the first things that we really focused on was education and career development, self-improvement. There, there's a lot of real estate seminars and events and coaches, and, and we really started investing in that and going to as many of them as we could. So tell us about that. How did you pick the right ones? How did you know of all the events, which ones were applicable to you? And yeah. how you needed so, to go? Because there's lots well, of options. Well, first, we really sucked at it, quite honestly. We, we didn't go to the right ones. But, but I think through trial and error, um, we went to enough of them to where we started figuring out which ones did work. Uh, and for us, um, you know, some of those events were the national conventions and then some were smaller masterminds. Matt and his, his network, which is exclusive to, to one agent per market, and I know Viral does some similar mastermind type events. Those types of events are where we really got a lot of value. But it started with just going to the large national conventions and meeting people and and it really opened our eyes because I think we had a lot of limiting beliefs about whether or not you'd be successful in real estate at a young age. And we met a lot of really successful people who were young that were just really killing it. And I think it eliminated some of our limiting beliefs about what we could or couldn't accomplish. And, and we started branching out and going to as many, as many of them as we could. I mean, we would go to the conferences, the conventions, we'd go around and talk to people, we'd sit in the classes. Um, and I think the, one of the biggest mistakes most real estate agents make when they go to these conferences and you guys might get mad at me. You guys might start throwing stones at me after I say this, at least you two anyway. <laughs> uh, and the realtors go there and they buy everything, right? We go and we buy everything and we come home and then we implement like one of the five things that we buy. So we were real strategic at first in going to these conventions and saying, you know what, let's bring back a maximum of five, literally five ideas or five things we want to change and come back and focusing on implementing and improving those. No, actually, if I could comment on that, you're actually spot on, Andrew. I think that's actually the mistake that a lot of agents make is they go to conferences and they want to grab everything they see. And the sad part is not everything there is applicable to them at that point in their business. I think what you did, I think, I think of Lance Loken, what he does as well, take one thing, dominate it, do it right, get everything in place, and then add another layer. And I think well, that's, that's a nugget that I think, I think shouldn't be underestimated. It's, it's common sense, but so many people make that mistake. Or they go to the convention and they just focus on getting drunk the whole time and don't go to any of the classes and they party 
which is great, but you spend a lot of money to go there. So we would really hold that money accountable. And if we got great experience at an event, we'd go back to the next one. If we didn't, we wouldn't go back. And we'd ask other successful people. I think that's another, another thing agents make the mistake of. Sometimes they're intimidated by people that are successful. People, people that are successful want to help other people. They, 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 it's, it's they're, they're passionate about it. It's why, they have, it's why they create jobs. It's why they have a lot of people that work for them. So, you know, we would go up and ask some of the top agents at the time and say, hey, what conventions do you go to? What books do you read? Inquire and ask them because they'll probably tell you. They're, it's not hurting what are those, Andrew? Tell you. Give us some of the events that really made a big difference in your life. So, um, we've coached with, we, yeah, we've coached with Bob Corcoran for, for years. And, and that's an event we don't, we don't miss his events. He's done, he does boot camps and he does a leadership uh, summit. In fact, we're all going to be there um, in, in a couple of weeks. Um, in Orlando, uh, so you know, if you go to that event, you have a chance to see all of us there. That that's an event we we would never miss. Um, we would go to the you know uh, you know we were at the time we were Keller Williams and now we're Remax. We we've gone to the Family Reunion. We've gone to the Remax R four events. Um, we'd gone to at the time even back in the day we weren't with Star Power, but we'd gone to a couple of their events. Um, you know, so so those are probably some of the key ones. Um, you know, we, we've branched out now and now we go to like the Inc. 5000 event or, you know, events for other industries and, and you know, that aren't necessarily just real estate, but we really looked to go to as, as many as we possibly could. And then of course the, the brands would all have their little, you know, seminars outside of the main one. They have, you know, the, the, the little networking groups that they do and the local things. And we go to as many of those as we could as well. Cool. I think what's interesting too, Andrew, you do this and I think any rate member listening should imitate this or any other business uh, or any other uh, real estate agent. You tell about quickly about the little mini masterminds you do with local businesses. In Correct. Your community. Yeah. So we have businesses that we, that we do a lot of work with and we sit down and kind of explain to them things that we do in, in the hopes that it'll help their business and obviously they give us ideas. So, you know, we, we look at masterminding not just as focusing on real estate, focusing on just really any other successful business owner. One other thing that we would do that I think was really strategic that really helped us is we would pick, you know, we, we'd look at the roster of these events that we'd go to, especially the ones that maybe only had a couple hundred or 300 people. And we'd find five or six agents that were doing more business than we were. And we would do everything we could to get on their calendar and meet them, whether it was for lunch, whether it was for dinner. And we'd have some pre-planned questions to ask them. So we'd go armed with, you know, uh, an agenda, you know, to, to get our investment into that education, to get a return out of that, to learn. And, and so we'd have those people that we would target. And, we'd, and certainly not every one of them would beat us. I can tell you that. A lot of them did, even when we were nobodies, no, no one knew who we were, and we didn't do much business. Now we're kind of that person that a lot of people come to, you know, for things like that, and we're, we're glad to give back as much as we can. And, but there were so many of them that, that were gracious and helped us. Um, some of those same people now call me for advice, so it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of cool. But, but I think going to one of those events and having an idea of some people whose businesses you look up to and say, what? Man, I'd love to go to dinner with them or even have lunch with them or sit at their table so I can learn something from them. Cool. So let's move on. So obviously education was the first step. And you made a big commitment to that by meeting the right people at the events. And then you learned something. And was probably yeah. of all the lead generation that you could do, you chose to do radio, which is one heck of a jump. Why don't you talk to us about that jump to start doing radio in Tampa? So um, they're, they're, interestingly enough, we've done radio for a really long time. We, we have several celebrity endorsements, which is, I think, one of the, one of the real keys to, to radio success that, that Matt helps with um, is, is having exclusive market-driven endorsements from personalities that really connect in your market. I can speak a radio spot myself, but if I have someone that's more respected by the audience, it just, it's just going to deliver uh, at a higher level. And Matt's got some exclusives with some of the best national you know, personalities in, in the country when it comes to real estate. That are really, really impactful. So, so for us, what's funny is I was really, 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 really skeptical with radio. Um, and, and Matt remembers because he, you know, it, it took a while for me to get to the point where I said I was going to do it because I thought, you know, I don't know if this will really work. Um, and the reality is a lot of times it doesn't because not everybody's set up for it. It takes a long time of commitment. Uh, you have to plan on a large budget. Radio is not a, a cheap thing, and you have to do it for a really long time before it works. It's not like where you can just buy impressions from you know one of the web portals like Realtor, or Zillow, or Truly, and it just and it just works. You have to make a really significant investment in a long period of time with a well-written spot that Matt does an amazing job with, and a, and a ringy, catchy brand. 
for, for it to work. And, and a lot of people um, aren't right for radio because of, because of that reason. But so for us, that's, you know, we rolled the dice with it. It took a while, but, but eventually took off and, and has been a great, you know, source of not just business for us, but branding. And then the, the introduction to Matt and his network, whether it's Matt or whether you're, you're out there going to other coaching events or whatever, there's a network of those agents and those relationships um, have been crucial to our success. People we can call and bounce ideas off of. Can we go a little deeper on maybe how you started off with the ad spend and maybe what some of the spots were? Give the audience yeah. a little bit more idea of the radio. Maybe we can help out with this, Matt. Sure. So the very first thing we did was an endorsement with Glenn Beck. Um, so Glenn Beck is, um, if you don't know who he is, you probably know who he is. You <laughs> either love him or you hate him. Um, and in Tampa, Florida, that, that's the same thing. You either, half the people love him, half the people hate him. The half the people that love him, it worked really well for us to get business from that audience because you're, you're attaching to someone who's so well known and respected by that audience. Um, and, and it was, you know, we focused on, um, you know, call to action advertising. Um, we've done a guaranteed sale program for a long time. So that's been a big key to, to that working. Um, and that's another thing that, that radio, you know, radio is a hindrance on people for because you have to have such a strong call to action. And there's a lot of realtors that obviously wouldn't want to say, yeah, I'll buy your home if it doesn't sell. Cool. Where could someone go to see? Don't you have a landing page for your radio, Andrew? Uh, sold or we buy it.com cool. is, is the one we use the most. So check out sold or we buy it.com and to get a good idea more of the specific radio that they're running. Any more that you want to add to that, Matt? Well, I think, I think just what Andrew said, I mean, Glenn is certainly relevant in Tampa. Uh, in every market, there's going to be a handful of influencers that really impact people. And sometimes it's a local, sometimes it's a national. Um, but, you know, really being able to, to pick out the right person, that, that doesn't, you know, people have tried to jump on the same stations and use a secondary voice or someone who's, you know, is available and they just flop because that person doesn't have credibility with that audience. So being able to pick out the right voice is really, really critical. And that's really what differentiates why after 10 years, you know, Andrew still stands on that station alone because there's really no other high impact voice. Rush Limbaugh's not available. He's got Sean Hannity. He's got Glenn. He's got the morning show. So we've got the key people on that station that really make it work. I think that's a very important point that, 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 that could easily be missed. You could just, and believe me, radio stations would love to take your money. They would love to tell you, oh, this will work. And is, they need to hit budgets. But being able to have someone to guide you, and sometimes, and Andrew will even tell you, there's people, there's stations we've looked at, we've said, don't do it. Don't take that person because it'd be a waste of money. So tell me about your budget when you first started. So you're burning the candle at both ends, 80 hours a week, 400K GCI, flying around everywhere too. And yeah, and I think one thing to whatever. think about is, so when we talk about 400K GCI, a lot of people look at that and say, oh, you made 400 grand. And it sounds sexy, but no, uh, you know, we, we didn't make a lot actually because, you know, you had expenses and marketing and costs and taxes and all these different things that, that ate into that. So for us, we started, you know, we were very conservative with radio. We started, I think, with about a $3,000, $3,500 budget, which was like one-tenth of what Matt said it needed to be at, you know. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. But, but, but in reality, it was, it was a really moderate budget for us. But we kept at it, we kept promoting it, we kept doing it, and every year our budget has grown. Um, we'll spend over a million dollars on marketing this year. So, you know, compared to back then where $3,000 is a stretch, um, and, and it, it spooked us. I mean, I remember coming home and telling my wife, hey, babe, we're going to spend $3,000 a month on radio. And, you know, I, I thought she was going to divorce me. So um, now uh, we're obviously in a much different stratosphere in terms of our budget, what we spend to, gr to grow the business, but we've grown it organically. I mean, that's over a really long period of time. So it's not like we went from 3000 and, 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 you know, quadrupled it or anything. It was a real gradual growth where we said, okay, we've got enough leads. We've got enough agents um, that that's working. Let's do a little bit more of it, or this is working. Let's do more of that. Or this is not working. Let's stop doing this. So you started doing the radio. And then you start getting leads. I assume it all comes into a trackable number. And then someone fills out a lead sheet when it comes in and you're, you're getting these leads that come in and they're great. They come with some leads. You probably need uh, some coaching now on how to scale up. So the next thing you mentioned was, is you started researching which coach is going to guide you on this journey to build a multi-million dollar business. Tell us who you hired in the process of that and what it was like working with your coach. 
So we hired Bob Corcoran, who we've coached with for uh, seven years now. And, and I actually met, met uh, Bob at one of Matt's uh, events. And, and Bob has, is one of the top real estate coaches in the country. He's always coaching some of the top Wall Street Journal people. And um, at the time, I'd actually read a book um, that, that mentioned, uh, from, written by another top realtor, that mentioned Bob being their coach. So, so I already had some familiarity with Bob, and then I met him. And I thought, man. This guy, I'm, a, I'm afraid of this guy. He might actually hurt me if I don't do what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, I've been an athlete, so I played Division I college basketball. I've always loved sports. So when, um, so when I met Bob, he reminded me a lot of, of basketball coaches I had. He's not afraid to get in your face, not afraid to, you know, to, to, to tell you you're doing something stupid. And I really like that. A lot of people um, let their ego get in the way, and, and they don't want somebody who's going to ruffle their feathers. But, but I felt like I needed that. Um, Bob's very direct. He doesn't beat around the bush. So, but, but how we got to Bob was meeting those people, but, but we vetted out a lot of other companies too. And, and when you're picking a coach, I think it's important for you to pick somebody that makes you uncomfortable. Um, don't pick the guy that tells you everything you want to hear that, that you like and you want to take selfies with. Um, you know, I, I, I just, I'm just not a believer that, that the person that's going to tell you all that stuff that your buddy is necessarily the right person for a coach. And we've been with Bob a long time and we've done things personally with him and he's a friend now, but he's also not afraid to, to really, you know, crack the whip when we're not doing something right. And that's what you need in a coach. You need somebody who you have a conversation with. Who you're like, oh man, that, 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 that guy might, I might not like that guy all the time, or that might make me a little uncomfortable, but that's how you grow. The, the uncomfortability, the push that that person gives you is what takes you to that, to that, to that level. So we met with a bunch of the different companies. I liked that Bob was independent, not affiliated with any brokerage or franchise. So I felt like I could get the right objective advice that wasn't geared towards someone else's agenda. I felt like he was unbiased for me. And I liked his approach. I liked that he made me uncomfortable because I felt like it helped us grow. What were some of the systems you immediately implemented then that you did with Bob? So uh, the very first thing we did was we, we literally tracked nothing. I mean, we looked at each month and said, oh, we had a good month. We made money. Oh, where are all our leads coming from? We didn't track anything. So now we track every lead source, how much we spend on each lead source, how many leads we get. We track how much commission per sale, our average. Com I mean, we literally track everything. So we have trackers built in into a custom CRM that we use with Bob that lets us know how much prospecting an agent does or doesn't do, how many sales an agent does, how, how often they're reducing commission or... Um, you know, which lead sources are delivering returns and which aren't. Um, and, and I think really having a proper profit and loss statement was something that he was a masterful with us with. We, you know, we had a really rough, like our, our profit and loss statement was how much money is in the bank. And he sat us down and helped us identify from an accounting perspective, really how to do a proper P&L, how to track our profits, how to become more profitable, how to cut the fat, how to review expenses. A lot of things that I think realtors don't do because we're, we're, we're good salespeople, but we forget about being the CFO or CEO of our business. And he helped us really gain that skill set and gain that understanding so that um, we weren't doing things that didn't work for our business. And through that, you probably learned about the value of direct response marketing with the tracking, right? Correct. Because, and that, that's the key to it. Because if you're, if you're advertising, you want to know what's, what's delivering returns for you. I can tell you where we were at then, it was really easy to track and no sources. As we've grown and we have six different endorsers, we're on a variety of different TV and radio stations, and we're doing a whole lot of different marketing with you guys with Facebook and viral videos and, and email campaigns. As we've branched off into all that other marketing, you do start to, it does start to cross over a little bit. So as you grow, you'll have to understand that um, you won't always be able to get the exact direct trackable ROI for everything because sometimes you know, that impression of Facebook may have prompted them to call you and then they tell you they heard you on the radio too. So as you grow your marketing budget, you do more and more marketing, that'll dilute a little bit. But if you're not doing any of it now, when you start tracking, it should be pretty spot on. You should be able to get a really good idea. The other thing he did was help us with scripts, um, helps us, helped us with forms to take in leads, questions to ask buyers and sellers on the phone to help better serve the customer. Um, because that's really what it's all. We can grow this amazing business and do all this stuff, but what it really boils down to is doing a great job for our people and doing an incredible job for our customers. What would you say your ROI on just the radio so far has been? So you know, it's 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 interesting because it's definitely one of the one of the best ROIs that we have. 
Um, but, it, but it varies from station to station to station. And as Matt will tell you, it fluctuates throughout the year. So for us, it was a lot worse then than it is now. It's one of those things that improves over time. So when I, when I, when I say a number, people will naturally hear that number and think, oh, I'm going to go out and get that return on radio. And you're, I'm sorry, but you're not going to because it's going to take years and years and years of those impressions to get you that kind of an ROI. But we've had months where it's been, you know, 10 to 1 you know, in a month before, um, you know, months where it's five or six to one. Um, but, but ultimately for us, it, it's a great return for us, but it's because we've done it for a really long time and we've built a lot of other things around it to solidify our reputation and our brand so that when someone does Google us and hearing a radio spot, we're more credible to them than if, if we hadn't done all those things online. Okay. Um, so let's add, let's let's then let's let's move on. Can I, can I pause just for a moment because I want to capture. I want to make sure a point isn't lost inside of here. That you know, a lot of times you look at people that have grown big over the years, and all you see is them up here. You don't see them when they were here in their climb. And I think what's important to identify there's two things that really stood out that Andrew said. I want to make sure people caught this because it's a really good nugget. Number one, he wasn't afraid to take a leap of faith. That's, I know when he started with radio, he even said he was nervous. He, he did it anyway. He, he jumped into it. They're fearless. But he took calculated risks. Also, with his coach, he wasn't afraid to get out of his comfort zone and find someone that didn't tell him what he wanted to hear. So many people hold back because their ego gets in the way. They don't want to hear from somebody else. And they don't want to hear an authority. But oftentimes, if, if you talk to other smart agents – Let's say you could trust this person. They won't take you, well, they will lead you astray. Asking for referrals, asking for references. It, he, did, he did those things. Yeah. And now you see where he's at. So I want to make sure if anyone's on their way up, that's someone to learn from. Those two elements right there. And now you, know, you can see where else he went. Well, and that's like Matt said, and it kind of goes back to the education piece. We, we met a lot of people that have been so crucial to our success at some of these conferences and conventions. And we asked other people, we would target those four or five agents that we wanted to meet that were doing better than we were. And we'd ask them, hey, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? And, you know, and ultimately, uh, we would hear some of these same names over and over again. And that those were the things that we started to pursue and ask about. And we still do the same thing. You know, I mean, I still look at the Wall Street Journal list and look at the people ahead of us and say, hey, I want to meet that person. Or, hey, uh, Mark Spain's going to be at that event. And I know he does more than we do. And he's a great guy. And I want to make sure I sit at his table. So, you know, we, we have people that we, we still do that today where we look at people that are running an amazing business. And we want to spend some time with them. We want to go to their office. We want to travel there. We want to shadow them. Um, you know, all those types of things, I think, become really, really important for you finding the right people for your business. Great. So, start with radio. So, you focused on leveraged getting listings, which probably about yeah. your buyers. Yeah. And you uh, focused on getting a coach and then getting very good on tracking everything was probably one of the first things that you guys implemented. Yep. But then you also mentioned, uh, we'll move on to the hiring and whatnot, but you also mentioned the, um, the online stuff, which is what we do at Viral. Is uh, we are uh, so you're doing the core program with us, the two videos a month out to your database, mm -hmm. but also uh, we're also doing some YouTube and Facebook advertising to enhance that. Yes. So can you talk about your decision to uh, start you and you and YouTube channels and YouTube videos and online social media marketing. You know, how do you track something like that, and how has that worked for you? So, so here's the here's the really cool thing, and and Frank uh, and and I have become you know pretty good friends, and we we hung out in San Diego and and. Um, Frank is a lot like me. So initially I met Frank a few times and I was like, man, I can't stand that guy. <laughs> but it's because he was so crazy smart and, and everything he said made sense to me. Um, and he was a great salesperson. And, and so when I met you, Frank, I remember you were at um, one of Matt's events and you were talking about building YouTube playlists, writing tags and descriptions for YouTube videos. And we had done no YouTube at the time. I mean, I, 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 we'd done nothing. And you said, hey, client testimonial videos and property videos are like huge and you gotta do them. We came home and started doing them pretty much immediately. And I signed up on Frank's website like 15 times under like 15 different aliases. I didn't use my name because I knew he'd call and he'd eventually sell me. And he obviously eventually did and I've been a long time customer now. But, but don't use Michael Jordan, that's a dead giveaway. What's that? Don't use Michael Jordan. That's a dead yeah. giveaway. I know. I, I mean, you can see the Jordan picture behind me in my <laughs> office. It's like right there. So, but, but the, the interesting thing is, is that, 
we started with just the basics. And I think a lot of people get really intimidated when they look at YouTube and social media and they're like, oh my God, I don't want to talk on video. I don't know how to do this stuff. So at first we said, okay, we're going to video every property. Even if it's not great video, we're just going to get video content out. And as soon as we started doing it, we got better and better, better equipment. We, we learned how to do this. We learned how to do that. Then we would talk on video. Then we'd video our radio show. So it really led us down a path of looking at con creating content um, and, and, and content that, um, it, you know, brands you as an expert, explains to customers what you do, helps you get business, helps you look credible, um, gives information and education to your customers. Uh, and, and, and as we developed it even further where we are now, running ads based on some of that content that we track that generates business for us. So um, it, it's no secret that, you know, everybody's on social media. So we wanted to find a way to create content and, and publish things on social media to make us relevant, brand us as experts, and, and grow our brand and our business. And you guys have been a great resource. And um, even a lot of the free stuff that you've provided, webinars like this were things that we would always go on to learn from. And we'd implement two or three really good ideas from it that would you know, have an impact on our business. And the, the interesting thing is, um, you know, as you look across our chart of growth where we started, you know, like we talked about from scratch and then got to 400 and now we'll do over $200 million this year in, in sales. Um, some of the best years of growth for us, we did not even increase our marketing budget. And I think that's, that's really, really important. A lot of people think that every year if you're going to grow, I just need to spend more. But I dialed into what, what I learned from viral. I dialed into the social media stuff. And I started devoting resources to making that better, making more content, creating more content. So what ended up happening is the advertising dollars that we were doing stretched further because we were then more credible to people. They would Google us and they'd see a bunch of videos or they'd see some great reviews from our customers or a really, really awesome Zillow profile when they Google our names. So we started doing all of those things without even increasing budgets and our business dramatically grew because our advertising dollars stretched further because and especially millennials, we look more credible. You know, they, they looked at us and said, okay, they're legitimate. Look at all these other people talking about how good they are. I want to share your YouTube channel with everyone real quick. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Cool. Yeah, if you just go to YouTube and just search for the Duncan Duo, Duo, <laughs> Duo, Duo, you'll see, uh, you know, he's optimized for best Tampa realtors. We're really kind of focused on what the keyword he wanted to go after was. If you scroll down here, I mean, look at how well – all of this he worked with us on to get all the right keywords and the phrases and all these videos that pop up and he's getting some pretty darn good views and all this backs up all of the radio and all the other marketing that you're doing for results. In addition, to obviously having content to stand out to your database, which is the key, but you've expanded that so much more where so many people hear about you, you know, through your media, they Google you and they want someone that's actually credible. And when they find all this, they, they, they discover that. Well, and YouTube is very SEO friendly. I mean, so there's a lot of phrases where, you know, a lot of search phrases that we control in our market because of how much video content we have around a search phrase. Um, so so we, we've invested time in educating ourselves to do that. But I, but I really want people to, to, when they look at my page, they're gonna be like, holy crap, that's a lot. There's thousands of videos, I'm never gonna get to that. And then they're just gonna put their head in the sand and they're not gonna do anything. But if you go back seven and eight years ago and look at some, I mean, we've got some super professional video now. Right, we got HD video, we got professional, you know, drone foot, all this stuff that we do now. But if you go back and look at some of my videos from eight years ago, they are freaking horrible. I mean, they are horrible, but I learned from it. I would watch them and be like, that's really bad, I can't do that again. And, and our videos got better and better and better the more that we did it. So don't, don't let, you know, where our video channel may be intimidate you from saying, oh, I'm not, I'm not ever gonna get to that point. Start with the basics, start with, like Frank does, a couple of videos a month, talk on camera a little bit, start, you know, buy a, a DJI Osmo, video some of your properties. Even if it's not you talking, just walk through videos of your homes, properly optimized, we'll get you leads. So just start with some really basic stuff and then build it and grow up from there. It can be just simply you talking on video and, and then some property videos and then, and then take it to another level where we've hired videographers and, and different, you know, different uh, professionals to help us. We didn't do that at first, and, and I think that's important. Cool. You know, if I could add one other thing to that, another another key you'd say to growth that you want to say, what what are some you know, success these clues, right? Andrew's not a Andrew is one of those guys that has to do it all himself. He wants to. He knows how to trust, which I think is a very key element. He, every pillar of the way, 
He said, Matt, you know what you're doing. Do it. Just tell us what you think. If we can afford it, we'll do it. And the same thing with you, Frank. He just lets you do your thing. He throws his creative you know, ideas in the mix and say, how can we do this? But ultimately, he's not afraid to give you the reins, to give me the reins, to listen to Bob, to trust Bob. I can't speak enough to that. Some people want to be t- try to do everything, and they fail. I will, I will they have don't, to they don't succeed. That. And we worked a lot of people, Andrew, and uh, you know, success does leave clues. And you know, for someone like Matt or me or anyone, you know, you can try to beat down your vendor, right? Right. Very adversarial approach. Correct. Right. You have taken this as a friendship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first, as a friendship, then it's almost yeah. like business partnership. So you've been very enjoyable to work with and that stimulates our creative minds to want to go the extra mile and just is a human element of the attitude that you take with the relationship you work with us we are truly extensions of your team as opposed to a uh, vendor oh no doubt about it i mean you guys are you guys are really resource humongous amazing leverage resource for me and here and i think this is a good example frank when when we when we went to san diego we said hey let's go to lunch and we were masterminding around some facebook ad campaigns And, you know, we spent some time together. I was sharing, you know, some ideas I had with you. And we were just coming up with things that you guys could do to help all your clients, not not just us. But the thing I loved out of it is you said, hey, I'm going to write you an email to send to your database. And and you wrote like a home evaluation email that you didn't have to do, that you didn't have to do, that wasn't part of our contract or anything like that. But just for me giving to you, you turned around and said, okay, I'm going to do this for you. And I, I mean, literally, I, my, I, I had listing agents want to quit that day from how many seller home evaluation signups we had. So, you know, it, you know, it, it, interestingly enough, I think you're right. I think a lot of people do view it adversarial. I think it's important to hold the money accountable to a result. But I also think if you're hiring a professional, it's just like us. It's why, it's why real estate agents are in business. If the sellers could do it themselves and cut out our fee, they would. Um, and, and, and I look at you guys in that same token, your fee is, you know, your way, your education, your value. And, and I think that's the, you know, what we've proven over time has been super successful for us. And we may have differences of opinion. We may say, Hey, don't do this, or we disagree or work through some challenges, but it's always, you know, it's, it's amicable. And I think that that's really the, the key to it. And we, and the other thing I think that's really, really important is we, we've been consistent and stuck to things. We've just kept doing them. It's like, it's like the wishbone in high school football. We would just, we keep handing the ball off. We keep, eventually we're going to break free and score a touchdown. And so a lot of our providers or coaches, are, we, we've, we've just been consistently with the same people for a long time. So you grow together, you learn each other's businesses, you learn ways for, to help that person more. Too many people sign up for a shiny object, it doesn't work in three months, they quit. The new shiny object, three months, they quit. Give it more time and develop more of a relationship, and I think you'll get more value from your vendors and your partners. I appreciate you know, one thing, if I could add to that, just another, another element, you know, the, the, about this whole success lead blues thing is just being willing to, um, I, 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 you just, you made me think of it when, when, when you did that. Oh, some people just complain, complain, complain. And it's true. Sometimes we've had adjustments to make in different aspects of our marketing. But one thing I appreciate about Andrew, and I think it's a good lesson to take home from anybody that's looking to go to the next level Dave Ramsey has a statement. If you come to me with a complaint, bring me two solutions. And one thing I really appreciate about Andrew, he's very solution driven. So that if there, he's not only bringing a concern and being not afraid to, to vocalize it in a respectful way, but then saying, you know what, what about this as a solution? What if we did this? Or what can we do? That's really key because rather than just sit back and complain, ah, this sucks, we can't do this, we can't do that, be solution minded. I think that's another element of a champion. One, and, and on that same token, a lot of that came from our coaching with Bob. I mean, when we first started with Bob, Angel and I were burnt. We probably complained a lot. So he had to pick us up, kind of carry us, you know, kind of pick our spirits up and give us, you know, kind of a better frame of mind of how to be a better leader, how to set a better example for people. Um, but Bob always says, you know, focus on, you know, focus on solution. I mean, and, and that's really what we do. It's, it's um, you know, and, and so focusing on the solution allows us to really – you know, learn because mistakes and conflict lead to, um, you know, great decisions in your business. And some of the best things that we've learned, we learned from a failure in our business or something that didn't work, you know, so focusing on the positive and focusing on the solution is something we just say all the time. It's our, you know, it's our core values. It's, it's, it's stuff we talk about as a company and it's how we do our best to, to frame things. And I think you, 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 you mentioned a really good point about conflict and how, you have to incorporate your, your vendors and you know, your partners and people that help you with your business into your team. 
Um, you know, we read a book that Bob encourages to read called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. And if you want to build a team, if you've got a small team, um, that book is an incredible book. It's got great exercises. And, and it really helps you embrace and understand the idea that conflict is not bad. Disliking what someone does or wanting to critique it or not liking how they did it, there's nothing, that's, that's part of growing and learning. It's how you resolve it and improve upon it and work it out with that person when there is conflict. Uh, that's where the magic happens. I think uh, what we've learned so far from just talking about this is uh, the way you go from 400,000 to 7 million is definitely in the character of the individual or success is an inside job of yeah. the person you had to become. Thank you. A million. I think Appreciate that. I, I'll give my wife all the credit. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know, man. Like when you start, you know, a lot of these webinars, you want to give really hard, actionable topics. And what you find when you start interviewing someone like yourself, it's more of these soft skills of working with people and the way you approach problems and the mindset. I think just from that, that time we spent there talking about those things, I hope people can kind of take that away. But let's, let's move on. We have a question about hiring and the process of talent, which was the next step. Before we do actually have a question, um, how did you transition from a realtor to more operational management? Do you still go on listing appointments? Where's your main focus on managing the company and your team? So um, the way that we're set up as a company with our organizational chart, I'm the CEO and my wife is, is really the, the COO slash CFO or CFO slash COO. So she wears a lot of hats. My focus uh, in the company is, is growing the company, helping the agents do more production, monitoring all the marketing, making it rain, creating more business, opening up uh, pillars of revenue. Um, my wife's role really is, is managing the operational side of the business, the finances, the staff. Um, we have some leadership below us. So we have a lead, a director of listings and a director of buyers that are kind of our direct reports that do a lot of the day-to-day -day coaching and managing of the agents. Um, Angel and I are really at, you know, 20,000 feet up in the air with like a high up view of the business now. And that's, we've done every job in the company from, you know, start to start to finish. But where our most dollar productive time now is, is, is on those types of opportunities, the, the lar you know, a large developer or a relationship with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, you know, some of those types of things are really what we focus on now. As far as are we still in production? No. Um, you know, we have listing agents, uh, buyer agents. Um, you know, we still occasionally have to get involved with the transaction if there's a problem. Um, you know, we're still overseeing it all. And technically we're still in production because we run a team, but we're not necessarily going on the actual listing appointment. Uh, I think another, and another key part of that is, um, there are occasions where, you know, if it's a professional athlete or, you know, our endorser, Jack Harris, um, on 970 in Tampa is, is a multi-time repeat client. Some of those I may still personally handle some of it. Um, but for the most part, it's not you know, because I don't do it as much anymore my people are better at, I've trained them to the point where they're actually better at it than I am because they're doing it every day. I'm a, I'm a big sports guy. So I, you know, I look back at, you know, the Lakers in their heyday, for example. And I think of myself as like, you know, the, the owner, you know, or Phil Jackson, so to speak. Um, and, and my agents are, you know, the Kobe Bryant's and the Shaquille O'Neal's that are, that are, you know, shooting the ball and scoring the baskets. Gotcha. I put them in the position to do it though. So that leads us to hiring. So let's talk about some of the hiring processes that you had to learn, let alone organizing your organizational chart, I would just assume, and how do you find and attract and the right people, both administratively and agents. Let's touch and on that for like 10 minutes. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, that's one of the biggest struggles that you will have when building a team is finding the right people. And um, it, it's one of those things that early on, Angela and I would say, oh, we like this person. Let's hire him. Um, that didn't work out too well. Um, so, so we had to get really specific with that. Bob, Bob has a, a, you know, part of his coaching program where he helps you interview, he helps you with forms, with personality assessments. Um, and then over time, we've really leaned a lot on our team. So in our company, um, we're going to have multiple team members meet with the person and all those team members have to like them for the role, not like them personally, but believe that they'll be successful in the role and believe that they will be a cultural fit. And I think that's the biggest key. I can teach someone how to sell a house. I can teach someone how to write a contract. I can't always teach someone how to be a good person. So if you, could, if, if you want to pause just for a minute there. Yeah. And I knew there'd be a moment where I could actually give a shout out, you know, to, to, to my Cubs. Ah, you, know, Epstein, huh? you mentioned about coaches and great coaches. Um, I think of like Phil Jackson. I think of Mike Krzyzewski, Coach K. To, the, all of them say the same thing. I actually got to be at a conference two weeks ago with the CEO of Whole Foods. All he talked about was culture, culture culture. 
Do you mind talking about that and uh, addressing how you changed as an agent, your view of culture, and how you hire based on that now? So as a salesperson, um, which, is, which is what the majority of realtors are, as a salesperson, you think of things and people differently than you do as a CEO. And I think, you know, Angela and I have really graduated to the CEO, CFO, and COO of our business from real estate salespeople. So when you're a salesperson, um, you're burning it at both ends, you're working a lot, and your idea to hire someone is because you need someone to help you, and you hire them fast, and you don't really follow a, a really significant plan. You, you just say, you hire because you have a need, not necessarily because of the right person. So, you know, Bob worked with us a lot over the years, and then we've obviously developed some of our own strategies to really help identify what it is that we want in someone, what kind of values they have, uh, you know, what, what we look for in a candidate, um, you know, what kind of things they say in an interview or what kind of things they say when we put them through some tests. We have, it's funny, we, we have a, when we run ads, we have some really specific things in the ad that we tell the person to, to you know, to do. And I can't tell you how many times I've gotten snarky emails from realtors saying, I can't believe you asked me that you want me to do all this stuff. I'm like, fantastic. You're not a fit. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you help, you just help me weed you out. So the, the, the reality is, is that you're, we're looking for something specific and we've developed a system and a process for how to find out if that person is the right fit for our company. And we don't just hire based on need. We hire, um, you know, it, we're always looking for talent. So if someone, if, if, if someone inquires about joining our company and we say, ah, oh, I don't know if we have enough leads, you know, you end up passing on someone that can be super talented. You can find more business. It's a lot harder to find great people. So, so for us, we really hire to the culture and the culture for us means a positive environment. It means people enjoy coming and working for you. It means that you're not yelling and screaming and cursing at them. Um, you know, it, it, it means that, you know, again, a, a positive environment. And it's not always sunshine and rainbows in real estate. I mean, we know there's some tough stuff we got to deal with and some attitudes and challenges and problems. So there's always obstacles. But I think the key is finding like-minded, uh, happy, positive, um, solution-oriented people that you can teach a lot of the other things too. The, um, one of the, one of the reasons we're doing this webinar too, Andrew, is so if anyone's watching it, they can see the value of maybe saying, Hey, maybe instead of building my own $7 million team, I could work with you. I think right. what could be very interesting for everyone to hear is let me just kind of hear, uh, more directly, uh, your, um, pitch, if you will, your presentation, like why would, uh, an agent come join your team as opposed to go joining directly with the brokerage or go off and starting their own thing. I'd like to hear that. Yeah. So, and, and I think that's the, that's a question that we get a lot and it's an important question because it explains how we're different. And, and I think, you know, it goes back to the culture thing. There are companies out there whose sole goal is hang as many licenses as they can. Let's have 200 agents and have, you know, 20 of them do anything. Our goal is to have, you know, 40 or 50 agents that are rock stars that are all making great incomes, selling lots of homes, but also where we're taking a lot of those things off their plate. So uh, transaction management, listing coordination, photography, uh, signage, role play, education, training, coaching, mentoring, all these things are things that we do internally at our company to help the agents make more money than, than the norm because they're focused on dollar productive activities instead of all of the, all of the noise that's in real estate. So for us, um, you know, that's really what our, what our pitch is. It's, you know, you're going to be in a company that's going to spend a lot of money on marketing. It's going to get you a lot of leads. Your average, our average income agent, our average number of homes sold per licensee is way higher than, than, than market averages. Um, you have an ability to make an income very quickly versus, you know, sitting, I mean, my first year in the business, I sold one house, one, one to my freaking parents. <laughs> I gave them half the commissions. Like one, you can look it up. It's true. It's one. So we wanted to build something where people could, could jump right in and have opportunities after they've been properly trained. So we have a boot camp program. We have a training program. We have mentoring all, so all focused around giving the customer a great experience with a great person full of integrity um, while focusing on having people that can earn um, a great income uh, at our company. Great. You give them leads, right? 
so many leads, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, that's the big question. I mean, it, it really leads. is. And, and, and so, I mean, there's days where we have over 100 leads, you know, 100 buyer leads, you know, between phone calls and web signups. So uh, our company generates a massive amount of leads and, and there's never a shortage of them. You know, they're, they, they're, they, they come in every day. The phone doesn't stop ringing because of all the ways that we've been able to advertise and market our brand to, to you know, to consumers directly. Cool. If you don't mind me asking, especially your agents, that, now you're talking about agents on your team or agents that are just doing your brokerage? I don't have a brokerage um, from a standpoint of individual agents. My entire company is, is a team. So that's, that's what I thought because I know you I need to your, own, your own office. I so anybody that comes in, yeah. explain for a minute the value that it means, even because I think sometimes you think, oh, well, like these endorsements just glorify you know, Andrew and Angela. You might comment and just like, for example, like with Beck or – Jack or, you know, the country station or Barbara Corcoran, how those endorsements actually help your agents, even if it's not you? Well, I think just like with any other, with any other endorsement, if you watch TV, you'll see, you know, pitch men for Ford or Walmart or, or any other local uh, business. And they don't expect to talk to Sam Walton on the phone when they, when they go and shop at Walmart. Um, so while I'm certainly not anywhere near that level, um, you know, that, that, that's the rationale. So it, it generates business behind our brand that our agents have the ability to service and handle. A lot of it's through scripts and role play and what to say when someone calls in and, and might have an expectation that they're going to talk directly to me. Um, and so a lot of it is handled through what to say, how to say it in the presentation to the customer. As far as endorsements go, though, they're really endorsing a company. While it may be the Duncan Duo, and that's what people hear, the Duncan Duo is now a brand and a company. Um, and going back to your question about the brokerage, we are broker owners and we own two offices, but we run a team model. So there's nobody in my company running their own business. There's nobody doing their own individualized marketing. It's all geared around the Duncan Duo. And, and that's just the business that, that I want to run. That's the, that's the wonderful thing about real estate is that, um, you know, we all, all, there's all kinds of different ways to skin a cat. We can all run a business however we want to run it. And that's, that's how we've chosen to run it. That's how we enjoy running it. It's, it's been very successful for us. Great. So, um, there was a question here that I'll get back to here. It says your attitude is refreshing, Andrew. Thank you. Um, we'll kind of get more to the Q and a section here, but, um, any key takeaways for new agents and the benefits of joining a team? I guess you answered the benefits of joining a team. Yeah. I don't know. Let's just say there's a, <laughs> how would you answer yeah. that one? No. So I think I will tell you, I think one of the biggest mistakes that you can make as a new agent is joining the wrong company. And it's why the, the, failure rate for first year agents is really, really high in our state because, and, and I was almost one of those statistics. Now, now I have nothing bad to say about the company I went to because I think for me, I was in a different position where I really focused my first year on education and learning and, and then obviously did great in my second year. But, but what I'll tell you is I, I think you have a really crucial decision to make. A lot of people will look at a company and say, oh, well, they offer a higher split or a lower fee or, um, and, and they start looking at the wrong things. You, you get what you pay for. Um, and so if you're looking for the company that's, you know, based on a commission split, but you did four deals, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. So, so for me, I think it's really crucial to go somewhere where you can have a lot of on the job training with people doing the job every day. You can have opportunities to earn income quickly. You can have a powerful brand behind you, not just locally, but, but even, you know, on a, on a larger scale, kind of behind you, supporting you to where you're more, you know, more credible to the consumer. Um, that's something I think that's allowed our agents to hit the ground running. As far as joining a team, I think it's a no brainer for a new agent to join the team. I, I think my business would be even farther and further along today if I'd had the opportunity to join a functioning team that could have taught me some of the stuff that I had to learn on my own. So there's no question that joining a team is, is the right way. And I, and I think it's also a way to make more money. You know, sometimes people look at the commission split or the GCI of joining a team and say, oh, I can make more money per deal over here. But if you do 30 deals at my company versus eight somewhere else, you're going to make more money, you know, at, at my company. So the, the idea behind it really is focusing on how much money will you put in your pocket and stop worrying about how much money you're also putting in, you know, the broker or owner's pocket. You know, another thing uh, along that same line, if I can just add this uh, point in there, it's not just a matter of doing 30 deals on your own. Eight deals, you're doing everything. 
versus 30 deals. You got someone else handling all those minutiae right. and details. Yeah. So you can focus on one out, one or two elements. It's much easier. And you're also not worried. You're not dealing with spending marketing dollars or uh, that, that's another big thing why people get out, they get in and they realize, uh, and, and um, I mean, in my market, you know, you're, you're probably not going to be able to compete with me from an advertising perspective. You're not gonna be able to spend what I spend on radio and TV and Zillow and all these different places. So you're gonna have a hard time making a good enough income to really, to really matter and replace either a job or, or get started. So, you know, from that standpoint, I think it's really crucial that an agent on a team isn't spending those marketing dollars. So the dollars that they're making are dollars that are truly going into their pocket, not going to pay, you know, marketing bills at the end of the month because the rainmaker team leader handles, you know, that, that path of it. One other, and I think this is, this is important for, for new agents to kind of think about um, when it comes to, you know, structure and accountability. When I first got into real estate, I said, oh, I want to go into a field where I can have all this freedom and like this whimsical fairy tale that, that I could just show up every day and I was going to, and houses were just going to sell, Porsches were going to roll into my driveway and I was just going to all of a sudden going to have all this money because that's my, what my perception of realtors were. And, and again, I sold, and I'm a great salesperson and I sold one home my first year. So the, the point that I make is that it's, it's a lot harder, I think, sometimes than people realize to go out on their own and do that. And having a team behind you and all the resources behind you um, allow you to leverage a lot of those things to, to, to jump into and be successful uh, in a more quick fashion. And, um, you know, allow you as a new agent to have a certain quality of, of income in life. That's great, Ben. Well, we have any more questions. Uh, feel free to ask some more questions here in the uh, Q&A box and we'll get to them. Um, you mentioned here kind of toward the end is you really want to talk about um, expanding where so we went through education we went through the radio you did we went through coaching we talked a little bit about the tracking you got tracking systems in place I would assume a lot of that had to do with the CRM that you use mm -hmm. right um, hiring we talked about viral marketing and how that's helped you uh, by the way that's my company and then Matt's company is <laughs> radio and television experts you haven't caught on by that by who yet. I've worked with both for many yeah. many years you'll probably see my shiny <laughs> <laughs> my shiny mug on their website endorsing so, uh, them. I don't get any money from this. There's, there's no, I'm not, I'm not getting fed money for, for me promoting them. It's just me doing it graciously to help them because they've helped my business. Yeah, so if you're in front of your computer right now, you can go to our website. It's getviral.com, V-Y-R-A-L-G-E-T-V-Y-R-A-L.com. And the very homepage, there's a link that says download uh, the video marketing plan. And that video marketing plan is the exact plan that Andrew uses to uh, publish videos and get out and get results from it. And that's the, recommend, that's the marketing plan I recommend you would start with if you wanted to do some viral yeah. marketing. I think especially because it's, it's relatively, ba it's, it's easy to start it. You just have to do it. Yeah. And then uh, Matt's great too. And realize part of the reason we're doing is we're all just we're all gonna be hanging out together in Orlando in a couple of weeks. I know why uh, Scott's going to be there uh, and, and your side, Frank, but Andrew, myself, Bob Corker, and I mean, to get that kind of, you know, fun group in a room together, you know, we'll be able to share a lot of these other things one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm just excited to share them. Anytime I can hang out with this guy, I do it because he's full of uh, great market ideas. He, great. he forces my mind to expand. So, well, yeah, and, I, and I love, and I love Bob's event because Bob's event is also about how to be a better leader. And that's, Absolutely. that's something we could all, that, that I always want to get better at. Um, you know, there, there's certainly, I think every person has weaknesses and, and everybody has things that they're great at and, one of the things over the years, and you can ask people that have been on my team seven years, I think there's no question they would tell you I've developed and grown as a better leader in terms of how to communicate with them, how to, how to get results, how to you know, convey the vision. And, and Bob's event focuses a lot on how to, how to be a better leader of people and how to get more people to want to, to be with you. So yeah, we got two, three questions that came in here. Um, okay. Kayleen asks, how has video marketing specifically helped uh, to grow your business? Like one minute answer. Okay. Yeah. So um, first off, we use video for pre-listing packets. We used it for educational drips to customers to help convert business. So it's improved our conversion. Um, we've used it to market and generate business that we couldn't have gotten uh, as inexpensively. So running ads through YouTube and sponsored videos. Um, the, another way I think that, that video marketing has, has helped us um, is property videos. You know, they're, they're really SEO friendly. So there's people that will Google a property address and find our, our YouTube video. Um, we've also got, um, you know, we video, you know, radio segments that we do, educational videos where people will Google for, you know, hey, what, tell me about a USDA mortgage in Tampa, and there's a video of us talking about it. 
So it's, it, there's really a lot of caveats to it. And I think that the other, the other really important thing is conversion because if, you, if you've done some consistent lead generation with a certain source over a long period of time, there's a segment of the population, if you're not using video, that will maybe look at your marketing or lead generation and then go online and start looking, Googling you. You know, they're gonna look at, and, and this is millennials. I mean, they're gonna look at your social channels, they're gonna pull up your Twitter, they're gonna look at your YouTube, do they have a YouTube channel, how are they getting my property, you know, in front of other people if they're not using video. They're, those are questions that they're gonna have in their mind that if you're blank on all that, they're actually not calling you. So you're, you're, you're eliminating business that you would probably get if you built that out better because that prompts them to then say, oh, they're credible, they're legitimate, I can trust them, I'm now gonna call them when they wouldn't have called you prior. And then Andrew, uh, because you're a client here at Viral, Andrew started with the core plan on the website, the two educational videos went through his database. And that was easy. You know, he was yeah. just created two educational videos, answering a question, went out to past clients, there's an influence. And then we started saying, what other stuff that we can do? We started adding on some property tour videos, testimonial videos. He just kept sending videos in. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, we'll figure out how to optimize and do those. So that's why you see such a large scope. For those of you who are viral clients on here, you know, Andrew really – it was pushing us and emailing us what more he could do, you know, as opposed to us saying, Hey, let's get your two videos in. Even, even things like, successful. even things like the tags and the descriptions of the video, putting links in the, in the description of the video, the title of the video, all those things are things that you kind of, you know, learn with, you know, through your process with viral yeah. to help those videos deliver better results. So let's go on. Let's get to two more quick questions here. One is I do like this one from Ty. Uh, actual recruiting, ad placement, help wanted, Indeed, Zip Recruiter, Craigslist. How do you recruit for people for your office? So, um, all of the a little bit of all of the above we've used. I think it depends on the specific, um, you know, the specific job that we're looking to hire for. You know, having the company that we have. I mean, we hire people that manage transactions. We hire couriers. Uh, and then we hire, you know, salespeople. So some of it would depend on what we're looking for. I'll tell you that um, all we've used all those sources. Craigslist works very effectively for us. Um, but I think again, it's it's not just it's it's just like advertising a piece of real estate. It's not just advertising there. It's how you advertise there. So what are you conveying with that ad? Are you explaining your value proposition? Do you have uh, credibility with that ad or there are things in that ad that make someone say I want to lurk, look into that company we have testimonial videos from our agents we've built out a recruiting blog where we put educational tips out viral helps us with um, so it's, it's not just advertising there it's it's constant constant and never-ending improvement of advertising there and then another thing that I think a lot of people miss uh, or they're afraid of is how to grow your business through your people um, at our company, we have almost 50 people that, that work for us now, and I would say 15 of them knew someone at the company prior to joining it. So really leaning on your people, knowing your core values, knowing what you're looking for, and who do they know that's a friend or family member or colleague, uh, and, and, and constantly reminding them when you, when you need talent, because it really helps your culture too. I mean, when you have people who have been friends since elementary school, and, you know, when you have that in your company, people sometimes get afraid of that. They're like, oh, I don't want them to leave. If you build an amazing culture and you treat them right and you pay them well, they, they won't. Um, you know, and, and if they do, then you probably did something wrong and you need to figure out what you did. But the reality is, is that's been a huge thing for our culture to grow our company is really running like a family oriented business where, um, you know, we really lean on our people to find, you know, our sphere of influence, all those people to find people that will work well in our company. Great. If I add one quick thing to that, that's exactly what Dave Ramsey said. Of Dave Ramsey, of 600 people, he said his best hires have come from people who knew other people with, within their culture. But to add one element that, don't forget about your vendors, like your title company, Correct. Like your lender. Yeah. Hey, do you we, need somebody we view who those people as part of our team. team. Yeah, we view those people as part of our team. So. Yeah. We got a really good question here. We don't have time to answer it. So uh, I'm going to have you give out your. Uh, email here and all of our contact information here at the end. But this is a great question. This is, this is Andrew Duncan back in the day asking this question. I wish I knew who it was. <laughs> it says, anonymous viewer, you ready for this question? Thanks for putting this on, guys. I got a few questions for you. 
how many buyer agents do you have and how many listing agents do you have? What are their splits? How many admins? What's a rough estimate of your overhead for admin, marketing, office space, and so on? What's the estimated income of your top producing agent? And do you use video for your agent training as well? Okay. Uh, Angela, come here. <laughs> oh, yeah, so here's the deal. So, Andrew, I'm sure you're happy to answer questions. How could someone get a hold of you? Yeah. Um, so, so you first say, follow me on Twitter at the Duncan duo. You can, you can tweet me a question. You can direct message me there. I think that'd probably be the easiest way for me to handle it. I'll personally handle those. Um, so follow me on Twitter on facebook.com slash the Duncan duo. So you can friend us on Facebook and message us there as well. I think those are probably the easiest ways where um, I'll, I'll have a personal response for you instead of getting a million emails and going to bulk or spam or something, uh, following us on the social channels are probably, is probably the easiest way to do it. And, and I can quickly answer a little bit of that. Um, we're about 30 buyer agents, eight listing agents. The splits I'm not going to go into because there's just a lot that goes into that. It's not as simple. Um, how many admins were at like um, 10? And as far as overhead for all of that, I can't tell you that off the top of my head. I can tell you that um, it's a really, really big number and, and it might intimidate you, but that doesn't mean that you can't, it's, it's, but it's also a percentage of our overall revenue. Angel probably knows the number off the top of her head because she, she's better, better at that than I am. Um, you know, so as far as video agent training videos, um, we've got people that make several hundred thousand dollars as far as top producing agents. Um, do you use video for your agent training as well? Yes, uh, absolutely. We do. Cool. Matt, how can someone get a hold of you? Uh, real easy. Uh, four words, radio and television experts.com all spelled out. Um, very simple. And, you know, we like to say that if, if there's options in the market, sometimes there's just not a lot of options in the market at the moment. Doesn't mean that there may not be in the future. So feel free to fill it out. And uh, if we can help you now, we might be able to help you in the future. We, we don't know, but either way, always love hearing from people. Cool, everyone. So I'm Frank Kludzitz with Viral Marketing. I help put this thing on. And if you want to check us out, go to getviral.com, G-E-T-V-Y-R-E-L. We'll help you like we help Andrew by getting you on video with the webcam, making you really comfortable. Then we do all the editing, optimization, promotion to get those videos out to your database as well as online, which is what uh, Andrew did a good job with. And let me tell you, I've known this guy since he had like two clients and he's been an amazing partner, amazing friend to take someone from the st st start, very basic, to growing to the extensive level that he's worked with Andrew. Just phenomenal, phenomenal people. Thanks, man. I can't say enough about it. I appreciate that. Thank you guys both. So, so this is so this has been recorded. I'll send a recording out. If you register this, if you're on this, you'll get an email here in about a day or two with a call from the recording. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Andrew. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you.